Hi, and welcome to a video where we take a look at implementing transfer learning in Python using Takeras and TensorFlow. And we're going to use a data set Sephar 10. So now let's move into our IPython notebook to get started. All right, so now let's open our transfer learning lesson. That's notebook number 19, transfer learning with Sephar 10, which I already have open actually. So remember Sephar 10 has 10 classes of data. We have airplanes, automobiles, birds, cats, deers, dogs, frogs, horses, ships, and trucks. Those 10 classes here. So let's load our Safari 10 dataset here by importing it. Import the tools we need from Keras and TensorFlow. Import OS because we're just doing some maybe some directory manipulation later on. I'm not entirely sure why I needed it. But basically what we're doing, we're just mashing all the code together. That's, we don't need this optimizer anymore. We're going to use SGD, Stochastic Gradient Descent here and made a simple CNN. I think we've used something similar like this before. We just get our data here, um, load it, get the shapes out of it. Sorry, just print the shapes, scale it here, can change the data type, add a hot one hot encoding, and there we go. So just quickly give you guys a recap on how we build and you create our CNNs here using Keras and TensorFlow. So in a couple of seconds, you're going to print the model out, probably taking a bit longer than usual just because we have all these imports to do but we wait patiently for it to complete because that's how we are. All right, so we're done. So we can take a look. We have 1.2 million parameters in our CNN. Um, it's not too bad. Image size is 32. Okay, it's fairly good. So now we're going to train our model. So what I'm going to do, where is the epoch size parameter? All right, so 10 epochs. So let's train Safar 10 for 10 epochs and let's see what sort of performance we get. Now, this is with no transfer learning. This is just raw, basic, normal CNN training from scratch. So let's take a look at this. Okay, just illustrative purposes of this lesson. I'm not going to train this for 10 epochs. Maybe I will, and let's add this on to the end of the video. But for now, let's just see the performance we get after training for one epoch. If I took 178 seconds, and we can see we got an accuracy of 0.21 on the training data set and a validation accuracy of 0.34. Not horrible, but again, these are 10 classes, so that's just a little bit better, twice as good as guessing. So now let's just move on to starting to use transfer learning. So we're going to apply those concepts we took a look at in the previous video section. So, but before we do, let's actually, I've saved a model that we trained previously. So let's load this model and test it on some of our Safari images. Now this looks like a bird, but it's definitely not a horse car airplane got that right it's a car not a truck it's definitely a truck not a frog it's a boat not a truck boat not a horse that's a boat not an automobile that's not a cat it's a car it's not a deer it's a bird so you can see performance is abysmal it's crap so what can we do let's now look at using transfer learning to get better accuracy much faster so let's import our stuff our keras functions here Let's, we're only going to train this for one epoch here. We're going to use a pretty small learning rate, as you see here. This is a hundred times smaller, actually, than the learning rates we've previously used, which with e to the minus two. We have momentum here, which I didn't explain momentum right now, but just look at this, use that default value. We're just going to load our data set here, and we're going to resize it, because the reason why we resize here is because we're going to use VGG 16, okay? And re it requires an input shape of 48 by 48 pixels. So I know Safar is larger usually, all right, but we're just going to resize it to this size here just to get our images in the correct size that we want to use. Because I know Safar, I think it's 32 by 32, I believe, anyway. So just one hot encoding there. And there we go. Now let's import VGG16. And you notice we have include top being false. We don't include the top layer of VGG16. We just include all of the base layers that we're importing here. And we specify we want it trained on the image net weights. So then what we're going to do now is that we're going to extract the last layer from the third block of the VGG model and call it last here. This is a way we can use base model here, get layer, specify the layer we want to get, go use dot output, and we can just extract that layer here. So that's done right now. And then what we're going to do, we're going to construct now the top layer we want to create. So this is where, how we do it. Just use X as our model here. So we just create this here. So we have all of this here, batch normalization. We're going to use some dense layers here. We apply dropout as well. And then we're going to specify 10 classes here. And then this is our final top layer here with 10 
We uh, Safari outputs 10 Safari classes. We use Softmax as our activation for the last layers there. And there we go. And then finally, sorry, before I move on, we use this model function here to take the base layer here, input, and apply it to the top layer that we created before. Now, every time you may have noticed we put X at the end here in brackets, that's how we stack these layers on top of each other. So now the top layer is basically all of these here stacked on top. All right, and what we do finally is that we construct our full model here. Okay, it's just fully full. And we use a model function that we imported up here before. And our model function basically takes these inputs here and combines them together. And what we did next do is that we actually have to now freeze the layers in our base model here. That's our model that's been tied together with the top model that we created here. And we freeze it. So the reason we freeze it is so that we actually don't make those layers, those parameters trainable. You don't want those things to be trainable. You just want to keep the top layers there. So now we're ready just to print the model summary. You can see because it wasn't the full VGG model we trained there, it's actually a much simpler version. However, these are all fully trained already. So that's why the trainable parameters are only these last few parameters here. If you add this up, 65, 65, 10, 2500, should give you 134. Non-trainable parameters, those are the parameters we froze here from PGG network that we extracted, are right there. So now we're ready to just point to our data set here with our image train generator, create those little pointers there. And now we're ready to start training. And what you're going to notice immediately, some warnings are going to come up, but you can ignore those things. You can see, yes, it's going to take a lot longer to train still. It's going to take roughly about maybe three to five minutes to train this per epoch. But immediately you can see the accuracy is much better. It's at 91% on our training data set. And if you scroll back up to see our base CNN that we used previously, forget my errors there, scroll past it, our accuracy was 0.21 after training for 178 seconds. So you can immediately see that using transfer learning has allowed us to have a huge jump in accuracy right from the get-go. So if you want, you can train this for a couple epochs, maybe 10 epochs if you have the time. It's gonna take you roughly an hour to do, and you'll see your accuracy should be in the 90s for your validation data set. All right, so that's it for this lesson. Let's do a quick recap. You've learned basically how to load and train on the Safari 10 dataset, which you've seen is quite a simple, straightforward lesson. And now you've seen actually how to implement transfer learning by freezing the layers, building the model, and training the top layer of the pre-trained CNN to get vastly improved results. So now we can move on to some very cool stuff, which is object detection. So you're going to learn to use some deep learning object detectors, RCNNs, SSDs, YOLO, what are those things? Um, and then in the next video after that, you're going to implement one of those things in Python. So stay tuned for those exciting lessons in our next videos. Thank you.